So the first, week, uh, first class of first week, and this is chapter one in the book. Please read this chapter, it's very, very useful. It's chapter one is about electrical safety, and it's very, very important. You are going to work with lethal stuff, not to scare you, but you should give it its due respect. Electricity is dangerous, but very useful, and it's all around us, and it's hard to feel. Like if I turn off the lights here, you will think there's no electricity, but it's all around us, so be careful. I will talk about safety and some standards and some stuff I want you to do in the lab. So, there you go. So, we'll talk about electrical safety, what does it mean, why, it's just to give you some awareness of uh, how to protect yourself. There's a lot of uh, accidents to happen, hopefully, Knowing what you know, it will not happen. So, let's talk about it a little bit. We'll talk about electrical current and the human body. What is the relationship between our human body and electricity? Do you think you have electricity in your body? <laughs> what does it work? How does it work? What does it do? Hello. You're going to be in the video. Thank you. What is the relationship between your body and electricity? How, where do we have electricity? Brain. Brain. Zero signals are all electricity. Milli volts. What else? The heart. All the muscles twitching is electricity. But if you get a big muscle from a sheep or whatever and you zap it to twitch, so when they zap somebody with the defibrillator, what are they doing? It's 40,000 volts or so. Basically, they're wiping all the signals and start, and hopefully it will start again. So your body is synchronized, small little signals of electricity. It's very synchronized. Now, I'm walking right now and my, my brain is sending signals to all the muscles simultaneously so they will function. So your body has a lot of, a lot of electrical signals. Okay, what else? When you go to the gym and you get thirsty and you sweat a lot, what do you drink? Water. Not just water. Electrolytes. Electrolytes. Gatorade. Why? Salt. salt. What does the salt do? What did it try to do? They conduct. Your body needs to conduct electricity. If your body goes with salt, you, will, you have a seizure. Your muscle will seize. If you're walking through the desert in a very hot day and you sweat a lot and you drink just water and you, you don't replenish, uh, replenish all the water that you have, you will die. And then out of thirst, out of lack of muscle function, your heart will stop. Because the conduction through the body is not happening. What is plasma? It has a DD, which is the same thing. What is plasma? Great, so we have uh, liquid, we have solid, liquid, vapor, and plasma. What is plasma? It's ionized gas. So it's ionized something, fluid. So when we have plasma in our blood, that's ionized water. It has salt in it, electrolytes. So think about charges now. Salt, positive and negative. All these things add up to make electricity. So our body has a lot of electricity going on. Your brain mostly sends signals. What about the animals? Do they have electricity? Yeah, they use it as a metal detector. They detect their prey with the electricity. What about the eel? <coughs> the face mechanism, it glows in the light. So electricity is there. So how do you think uh, mammals or fish or any animal will generate electricity? <coughs> how do you think it does that? Same way as salt. Huh? Same way as salt. So, so the same way, we, it's kind of like a battery. They do have some chemicals that react together and makes electricity. Of course, they can charge and they can, uh, like the ears, for example, have really super charge and they can discharge completely. And uh, hammerhead sharks, 
the whole hominid has a lot of receptors and goes and detects any signals. What signals are you detecting? When I move, I'm making a lot of signals now. Because the brain is sending signals. Move the quadriceps, move this, move that. So we have a lot of signals. All in all, all in all, we are trying to see what is the relationship. So your body has a lot of signals. If you interfere with those signals, it could be fatal. And we said again, it's mainly bull, very, very small goldfish. So that means if you shock it, what will happen? If you put the, at the 120 volt equipment into 220, what will happen? Pop. If you have a small pipe but you put a lot of pressure in it, it will pop. So basically, you're going to burn some neurons and some receptors. When you get zapped, hopefully you don't get zapped. I get zapped many times. It's a really good feeling. It lasts for a long time. It's a tingly feeling. Why? Because all the receptors are shocked. What's happening? What's going on? There's a lot of that stuff. So it's just... Yeah. And sometimes you blew one of those, some of those small neurons. So yeah. if you get zapped, please let me know so we can check you. Uh, Type of injury that could happen from electrical current. What do you think will happen? Beside being seen, besides like feeling the feeling. Cardiac arrest. Cardiac arrest. Burn. What else? Burns. You get a lot of burns. Burns are possible. Cardiac arrest because you're interfering between or with the heart signal. Uh, some people have a pacemaker. What does it do? Just send small signals to the heart, tell the muscles to contract and expand and retract. So small little signals and not a lot. The battery for that pacemaker lasts for 10 years. It goes under your skin. So those small little signals are very important. Uh, so if you get zapped, hopefully you don't. It's a serious thing. So go on and get checked to make sure everything is functioning correctly. What do you think is the worst way to get zapped? Okay, let's rephrase. Which direction? Okay. Chest. Yeah, through your chest. This is the worst thing ever because going through your heart, where you have all those muscles and all those sensors, and if you please, if you have palpitations, immediately stop and go seek help. Don't try to be brave. Don't try to say, "Okay, I'm going to wait it out." Quickly go <coughs> and get checked. And I don't know what they're going to do, no, never, but they they can it, it, they can help because going through your chest probably you have you get a miss. Beat, they will have to do an EKG on you, etc. So be careful. Uh, we'll talk about type of injuries, procedures to be taken in an event of electrical shock. What would you do? And we'll talk about grounding. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll describe that. And safety procedures. So we talk about the nervous system, it's how we move, it's very important. Uh, we'll talk about plasma, which Gabe said it's the, it's the uh, ionized gas. The blood has a lot of plasma. If you <coughs> discharge all of your salts, you have to replenish the right amount of salt. Plasma electrolyte and sweat. Sweat is very salty, right? So when you sweat, you're gonna lose a lot of salt. So if you're walking outdoors in the summertime, <coughs> make sure you have water with electrolytes in it. Get some Gatorade, because water by itself sometimes is not enough. Salt content is very important. If you took uh, physics in high school, they did this experiment with pure water, and they put two rods in it, a light bulb and a battery, and you see the battery is off, then they keep adding salt to the water, and you see the light comes up. So water, pure water, is too old, it's not conductive. It's conductive, but not as much for a light bulb. So when you have salt, it's very conductive. So when you sweat, your sweat is very conductive. Okay, when you're gonna be working somewhere, you're gonna be sweating. So you're very conductive now. And uh, if for some reason there's a wire that's exposed, you're more prone to be shocked. Uh, and again, I keep saying that a lot. If you work in the field, be aware of your surroundings. Look what kind of wires around you, what you're bumping into because you might not notice you will be working with your coverall, your jacket, and it's wet, and you touch a wire, and it gets up. So what happened with being zapped is your muscles contract. That's why if somebody touches a live wire, they cannot let go. 
the muscles that are really seized. So it's a very dangerous situation. And uh, I think it's one of the questions of the homework, why somebody cannot let go? Because the muscles are already in maximum <coughs> contraction. Remember in the 80s when they had those uh, exercise machines where you sit in your office and you stick things? You know what I mean? <laughs> he remembers. What, what kind of gimmick was that? <laughs> oh, my sister and I used one. Did it work? She seemed to think so. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't know. Like, what, what is he doing? It's like you, you basically put uh, stickers in your body and it will grab your muscles in it. This is what late at night when you watch your commercials, you know? And people buy it. You know? <laughs> they have the dumbest stuff ever. And people buy into it. That's how it was 1999. Three easy payments for 1999. I don't know about working out, but I've seen physical therapy. That's different, yeah. That's different. So you're not like. Gonna get abs. Yeah. <laughs> they were sh showing somebody sitting in his office with the sticker that he's gonna get like all oh, buff. Well, okay. Whatever. <laughs> so, conduction. What do we mean by conduction? It's conducting electricity. I will talk about conductor and non conductor. Brad, if the bad, can you tell me what's a, what's a conductor? <coughs> Give me a name of common conductor. Copper. Metal. Copper, metal, all metals. Are conductors, <coughs> non-conductors, silicon, silicon rubber, most the plastics, polymers, non-conductor. What makes a material conductor or not conductor? We'll talk about that later. But mostly metals are very conductive. Here is a ten thousand dollar question: Is there an absolute insulator? No. No. Everything conducts the right voltage. Remember that. Electricity will jump through air. That's how we have lightning. So don't trust with a thick glove that you're gonna touch 10,000 volts and you're gonna be okay. No, there is no absolute insulator. You can always conduct through <coughs> using the right amount of voltage. Uh, so conduction to the material, ceramic, that's conducted at the right voltage. Heart function and brain function are the most vital things for your livelihood. If you have any issues with your brain and heart and lungs function and synchronization, probably is going to be affecting your health. Heat and ignition, you said like uh, electrical shock can cause burns. And uh, when you have a spark, a spark has a lot of heat in it, right? And we count on that, right? You have that in your car. You have 20,000 <coughs> volts going to your spot for like 3,000 times or 2,000 times a minute. So that little spark has a lot of heat, and that heat is enough to ignite your engine. And so heat is caused by spark, big heat. Did you ever by mistake was working in your car and you kind of shorted your battery? I did that. And it melted the screwdriver. <coughs> it welded the screwdriver, and it's only 12 volt. But there's a lot of current in the battery. That was scary. Luckily, my hand wasn't there. My, an old guy actually who was working on, uh, on a control panel like this one. And he was wearing a very nice gold watch. Somehow, a spark jumped from, the, from this bus bar into his watch and melted part of the watch. Gold is the best conductor, of course, right? So he lost the, not didn't lose the watch, but it did melt and did break his skin, so. So, which means if you're wearing metallic parts, try to cover them, try to take them off, don't wear anything metallic. Rings, if you work with your hand, doing some on live circuits, don't try to avoid doing that. So heat and ignition. You can melt stuff. Did anybody do any welding, arc welding? So when you do welding, you're melting metal using a spark. If you did any kind of welding in the past, if you see welding being done, that's a spark of 40,000 volts. And, uh, and if you see the welder, he tried to keep his hand not close enough to the metal, otherwise it will stick. That's why welders get to pay a lot of money because they have the hand skill to keep the right distance and maintain the spark and the right melting rate. It's really fun, by the way, you should try it. We have a few welding machines here. It's fun. But it takes you a few tries to be able to like perfect that. And uh, again, so it's a lot of voltage. 
a lot of current, 40,000, 30,000. So that tells you an idea of how much heat is in there, right? Metal, what do you think the melting temperature for, for uh, let's say, copper? 12,000. 12,000. 12, so that's a lot of temperature from a spark. So that gives you an appreciation of, <coughs> of the amount of voltage and what damage can it do. Okay? Uh, shocks. Shocks are bad. They hurt. And uh, again, thinking back, it's the, it's the jolt that you get, it might seize your muscles, and it can throw you off the ladder. Your muscle will contract the ladder once you get a jump. So it's a big shock, a big zap. So people always tell you which one is more fatal, current or voltage. From what I just said, what do you think is fatal, <coughs> current or voltage? Huh? <laughs> Both of them. <laughs> Both of them. Both, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you. The battery, if I put my, the car battery is full of volts, if I put my hand through it, I'm going to die. If I touch uh, a transformer, uh, do I have one here? I'll show you something we're going to play with. It's just going to come. 17,000 So this transformer, you got to be working with one of those. This is 12,000 volts going across here. It will jump. I'll show you. So uh, the input for this is 120 volts. But over here is 15,000, 10,000 volts. So that's a lot. You're going to see a spark jumping in there. It looks very nice. But if you touch that, it's not going to stay. It did happen once. Not here. Goes on. Uh, so be careful. And again, where would that go when you walk in a boiler? This is something you're going to be working on at some point, right? This is the transformer. It's touching the electrodes here. If the electrodes are located in the wrong place or touching the body, the body is completely metallic, right? What do you think the body will be? Yeah. So make sure when you, when you do that, that's why you need to be... These are the electrodes. If you misalign them, if they're touching any of the metal parts, all of this body here, it will be at 10,000 volts. So make sure you put them in the right place. Make sure it's, we'll, we'll learn on it, don't worry. I will practice. So again, as simple as it is, it's kind of dangerous. At least with the car, the spark plug, you put it and you don't look at it at all. It's kind of the spark plug. It has a gap in it. But uh, yeah, it has over 10,000 volts in it. So even though it's simple, it's still powerful. Okay. So we're talking about a shock. So one of the common problem we have when we do wire it is you turn on something and you get excited, you see a wire not falling, a wire loose, and you go and touch it and try to put it back. I did that. Because you just forget and you get excited. Luckily it's uh, 110, but hopefully it doesn't go to the wrong place. You should be okay. But uh, be careful. And again, because you don't see it, you don't hear it, you don't think it's there. So how what is the only way to know that the circuit is dead, you have to test it. So your multimeter, your uh, voltmeter pin is your best friend. Test before you touch anything. <clears throat> so live circuit, assume every circuit is live. Even if it's unplugged, go and check first. What if a system is unplugged? Do you think it's completely dead? No. no. Why not? So it's it's charged. Huh? It's always receiving power. Could be, and what else? Residual. Could be, what else could be there? Another line. Huh? Battery. Could be there's a, a battery, what else? Another line. Huh? A second line. A second line, what else? Does, does anybody remember those big TVs from the past? Um, well, not the flat screen. Mm -hmm. What are they called? The tube TVs, isn't that what they're yeah. called? Yeah, so, right. yeah, those have really huge capacitor. So this capacitor is gonna be there for a while, so if you unplug the TV and turn it off, Take out the 
the back there's a big capacitor in it and it has a lot of charge. Uh, I'm gonna have you also play with capacitors, which is <coughs> These big babies. So these are your ACs and big compressors. It has a lot of voltage. So you can turn it, uh, the equipment off for a week. This will still be charged. And you go and touch it. Yeah, it's a, not a fun ride. <coughs> so be careful. And I'll show you how to discharge it safely without being scared. There's two ways. There's the cowboy way and there's the, the nerdy way. The cowboy way is you go with a screwdriver and show the circuit. And you see it looks good. I'm kind of skittish. So I use a resistor, about 10,000 ohm resistor, I just put it for three seconds, and that's it. No spark, no heat, no surprise. Okay. So unplugged system is not always safe. Current and voltage effect, which was more harmful, they're both harmful, depending on how did they hit you. This is going to be your best friend, it's the multimeter. So, put that in your <coughs> Christmas list. Get a good one. It's a good investment. If you buy a good one, you can always uh, depend on it. And if you don't like it, you can sell it. They, they never lose value, especially the good brand names, like Fluke, Flying, or whatever. So, it does a lot of work for you. And you can test uh, voltage, you can test. Uh, Capacitor, you can test uh, AC and DC. So, if there's one thing you have to gain this semester from this class and the other class, is that using this multimeter and its functions. If you end up, uh, by, um, I don't know why I think we're in September, because I usually keep discussing before. By May, if you know how to use this uh, perfectly, um, I'll be very happy. How to use all these functions. So, we'll learn. Step by step, how to how do we use all these functions, and uh, <coughs> that'll be your best friend in the field. So what else? Shock or burn by high voltage. That's gonna be possible. Hard function, beat and flutter. There's also residual problems. You might get zapped. You think you're okay. You go home. A few days later, you feel some kind of numbing, some kind of sensation. Go and check with the doctor. They can do an EKG and check your nerves. Okay, current and voltage. So I'm gonna start with Ohm's law, just to put it there. It's over there, it's gonna be there for the whole semester. You don't have to memorize it. You can bring it in a card, you can tattoo it, you can do whatever you want, but it's really easy. That's Ohm's law. I use the triangle because it's easy to remember. The top is voltage, resistance, and amps. These are the component of any electrical circuit. Voltage, resistance, amperage. <coughs> Ohms were named after Ohm. Voltage was for uh, some, somebody named Volta, Nikola Volta, and amperage was Henry Amper, if I, if I remember correctly. So, it's easy to remember that and try to compare it to water circuit. If we have this in a water system, this will be the pressure, this will be the flow of the water, speed of the water, and this will be the size of the pipe. This is a very interesting analogy, we'll talk about it later. So the resistance is whatever opposes the current. The current is the flow of water. In this case, current is the flow of uh, electrons. We'll talk about that. And voltage is the pressure of current, <coughs> electricity. So for current, this is the flow. <coughs> so let's say flow. Opposition of flow, <coughs> pressure. Good. If you don't get it completely, it's okay. We still did not cover that. 
this one gives you an idea of what we'll talk about. So flow is that is the current, and current is measured in ampere. So one volt, one ampere, one uh, ohm. This doesn't measure amps. For measuring amps, the, the circuit has to be live, and you have to use a clip-on meter. So anyway, so amps is how much flow goes through the wire. So for 0 0.001 amp, you feel something. Okay? It's, you're going to feel it. Point zero 0.02, you get stuck. Which is, by the way, point zero 0.02 is whatever amp a light bulb takes. Yeah, so if you stick your finger in a light bulb socket, you might get stuck. Did you ever stick your finger in the cigarette lighter in the, in the car? Who <laughs> 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 did How did it feel? <laughs> I've been thinking about it since I was four. I never got the courage to do that. Sheep fences for lives. Huh? Sheep fences for lives. <laughs> okay. So, point two, you're going to get stuck. Point one, you're going to have particular separation. And point two, severe burn to respiratory analysis. That's even, not even one amp. It's point two amp. So, have some respect for the amount of amperage that's going through. During the break, I'm gonna bring some toys so we can look at how this works. So, what is fatal between those two? 0 0.015, according to the book, is fatal. <coughs> so, average, I'm gonna ask this repeatedly. How many amps are fatal? 0 0.015 is fatal. You might survive it, but it depends on how it will hit you. Again, some of the information we are going to take here are going to be in the Massachusetts Ordinary <coughs> Exam Latin. We're going to ask you what, how many amperes are fatal, what is Ohm's law, some simple stuff like that, not too much. Okay? Questions? So, voltage will cause you to have electrical shock, which brings up, and uh, being thrown with the ladder, <coughs> you, it will do that. If the ladder is, is going through uh, a wire or some equipment, you might get thrown off. So, which means that we do, what kind of ladder do we not use? No metal, no aluminum, and you can use fiberglass, you can use wood or plastic. I, wood is kind of questionable depending on how wet it is. But to be safe, get a fiberglass <coughs> or plastic uh, ladder. Not conductive ladder, or feet at least for the ladder. What is the non-conductive material? Is it wood, some types of fabric that are non-conductive, plastic, rubber, any carbon-based <coughs> material? Questions? Okay. So the national Electric code, they set the standards for all wires and uh, what can we do and what we can do. So they set the limits for uh, uh, for panels, the amount of voltage, wire gauges, etc. So again, this is one of the questions I'm gonna ask you at some point. What organization is responsible for the codes? The National Electric Code. The organization that you see. It's in the book. It's on the EPA. <coughs> Good question. Uh, which standard should, is supposed to be higher? NEC or state code? Okay, let's reverse the question. Let's, let's think about it the other way. Which laws are higher? Federal laws or state laws? Federal laws to everybody. So the state can have different, okay, <coughs> bad, bad analogy. <coughs> anyway. NEC is national. The state can only have higher regulation, nothing lower than the NEC. So NEC is the basic. We all have to abide to that. Kind of the federal law. Then every state can have its own regulation, given that it's higher. So it has to be the NEC and higher. What about town? Like let's say the state of Massachusetts, Westfield. Westfield town can have its own standard, but it has to be higher than the state, higher than the federal 
mode. So, ABC is the basic. Say again. So that was kind of the fun. Yeah, but uh, whatever works for uh, each city. I know Westfield has a lot of good ideas. I don't know how this would go in practice, but. Okay, so we talked about that, ABC, the codes, where you find these kind of codes. And again, the book has most of the, most of the, these codes. And by the way, uh, you don't have to have this version. You can look on Amazon or eBay and find something cheaper. It's okay. So this is the ninth edition that has the 10th edition. You can go back to the 4th edition. It's going to be the same information. Okay? Grounding. Let's talk about grounding. So when you look at a lot of uh, plugs, I oh, have one here. If you look at this pl plug, the three prongs, right? One is hot, one is neutral, and the third one, this big tall one, the round, that's ground. What does it do? <coughs> Let's draw it. So this is a receptacle. <coughs> Look at the happy face. Look at the confused face. Why is one opening is bigger than the other. Is it more confused? Yeah, for polarity, right? So one of them is hot, and one of them is neutral, it's also called the common, and one of them is the ground. So polarity doesn't matter for some equipment. So which one do you think is gonna be the hot and which one is the neutral? Small, and this is hot or neutral? Neutral. Pretty hot. Yeah, hot. You want the, uh, the the outtake is to be bigger than the intake, in case there's a surge. So this is neutral, this is the hot, this is going to be the ground. What is ground? <coughs> ground, especially with me. It's a big rod, they put it in the ground, people are in, they commit <coughs> that rod to every receptacle in the house, and couldn't do it. Why? So we have a wire going from here. If you have a wire coming from here, I know it's short. And this is the, the conduit. If, if this breaks and touches the casing, the ground is going to be the casing. So whatever excess power will go into the ground is of being around the receptacle here. <coughs> Did you ever touch a fridge or equipment that felt a little bit Field. Especially on the computer the CPUs back in the days. It feels kind of weird and funny. So that's because there is probably the ground has a problem. So the ground is supposed to take all the extra charges and direct them into the actual ground. There's a big rod in the house, outside, big copper rod stuck in the ground to take all the excess power. And it became the standard, so probably all the houses maybe don't have it, but now it's the standard to have a ground in every house. So that's what the ground do. If anything goes wrong, the excess power is not gonna go to the handle, it's gonna go to the path of least resistance. So water usually will go through the biggest opening, not for a small one. So the path of least resistance, is, which is the ground. So I, I'm not gonna bother to go through the body, it's gonna go through the ground. So most equipment has to be grounded, and the ground actually goes through the receptacle into the ground. And especially in this case, where you go to the kitchen or the bathroom and you activate the ground by some kind of fault, water got into the receptacle, water got into the socket, and the ground, and there's some kind of short, the ground will activate it. So for this case, we have something called GFCI. Do you notice that the plugs in the bathroom and the kitchen have this little light in it? and has a small reset button, that's for the GFCI. So at any time the ground is activated, it will shut off the, the outlet. Because there is a lot of water in there. And there has to be a plug for the hair dryer or the trimmer or whatever. But there's water, so they're, they're afraid that you will splash this, this receptacle and it will zap you. So it's in the kitchen. 
So there's all the GFC that if the ground is activated, it will shut off the switch completely. That's the GFC More about the ground. So this is a ground fault, and that's something you don't want to do. So this guy is becoming the ground now. Even though he's wearing his little shoes, the knee is there, something got wrong, he hit one of the one of the wires and he became an easier path than the actual ground. If he was wearing the insulating, if he was standing on his feet, probably he will not get grounded because the, the, there's a convenient path here for the ground to go in. So think about that. There's a fault wiring, the wiring of the electrons, the flow, we choose the path of least resistance and we have that already. Unless you become easier than the ground. So don't ground yourself. Don't stand in a puddle of water, otherwise you're going to be part of the circuit. Uh, for example, we have, what, what is a circuit? Complete circuit. So if I have here, try to draw a light bulb. We have here battery. We have here switch. If this switch is open, it's not a complete circuit. Once I close the switch, it is a complete circuit. The whole circuit is there. So that's the circuit. You'll be coming part of the circuit if is that you? And this circuit is closed. If you become part of the circuit, you connect in two paths, <coughs> that's when the circuit will go through it. That's why also you can see birds standing on electrical line and they're okay. And also in the old action movies, somebody did their belt and they hang onto the wire and slide. Because they're not part of the circuit. That's in theory, because they're not part of the circuit. Although that's not, don't, don't do that, it's not the rule. <laughs> but they always see somebody, oh, I'm going to throw the jacket off the wire and slide it. James Bond doesn't want this way. But uh, the idea is, in theory, that you're not part of the circuit. You're just dangling there, kind of this guy, if he's standing up, it will be okay. Uh, however, that's uh, an easier path for the electricity to go through his body into the ground and then the actual <coughs> ground in here. That's a picture of the ground. Again, it's a metallic rod going into the ground. The ground is conductive. It has soil, it has water, and moisture. It will go through it. And a lot of houses now actually are, uh, what is it called? Lightning rod protected. So it will, if it gets shocked or zapped, it will go through the ground again. What color is the ground? Green or just bare wire, which is copper. So if you want to put co colors here, Hot is colored. Neutral is always white. Ground, green, or bare. We're good. Another picture for the ground. And this is my control panel. This connect switch. You can see in the switch you're always going to have a connection to the ground. This is the main floor, basement, and this is the ground rods outside the house in the soil. Uh, a lot of houses have something called the knob and tube, old wiring system. Again, it's not a good idea uh, to enforce new rules in old houses because not everybody has the money to change things. So most old equipment gets grandfathered in. So you'll see in the field a lot of old systems, old stuff, ancient equipment, and they used to make me very well. I just fixed the boiler in uh, December when I was 40 years old, before I was born. Okay, wow, that's amazing. And it's still running, it just failed now. And it didn't even fail, just one of the, the bodies deteriorated. So you can see a lot of good equipment running with old ancient controls, so it's okay, they're not gonna force people to change it, but for new installation, has to be updated, safer equipment. I'm 
people get attached to all the different personalities. They kind of go. There's some psychology behind that. Yeah. Oh, I had this is the. Okay, I understand, but. I feel with old cars. I mean, I love old cars, but keep it in Sundays. You know, get a get a Civic or a Accord or something like efficient. I keep that for Sunday rides. Okay. Another piece of information. If you have this plug with three prongs and the plug in the wall doesn't have ground, what are you gonna do? You go get a pair of pliers and get the fucker out, right? <laughs> I did that. <laughs> it's frustrating. <laughs> yeah, it's frustrating. Sometimes if you really work out, you can get it by your, you can just pull it out. But do not do that. Do not do that, especially with power equipment. If you have power equipment like handrail, uh, chainsaw, something like has a lot of power, do not do that. Instead, you can buy some of these adapters, which they can convert from three to two. And they have a fuse in here, so if the, if the, if the ground is activated, the fuse will go and it will protect you, so you don't become addicted. Do not cut or remove uh, only an equipment with possible short, mostly handrails. Have you ever looked into a handrail, the old ones with the big huge motors? The plug-in ones, not the, not the battery, even the battery operated. If you try to drill through a wall, you see sparks flying off, right? Sparks flying off. So the possibility for short will be very possible if one of those uh, is spinning very quick and uh, one of the wires will lose its way and touches the casing. So this is a motor, it's one of the windings, but this motor actually, this is a stator, this is what's rotating. But in the drill, this is going to be rotating and it has a lot of wires in it. So one of those wires can cut loose and touches the casing. And that's when you have an issue. And uh, those drills draw a lot of amps. Especially the one that goes through rocks and well, we're gonna use them because you're gonna need to drill holes through walls, put uh, mini splits, put boilers. So with power equipment, I don't think the battery one will cut it. So you're gonna need to plug it in and get the proper cord and get in there. So you're gonna be careful with that. Do not use, do not cut the cord. Make sure you have safety equipment. Uh, what is double insulated? Some equipment they are double insulated means. They, if they get, if one of those wires get loose and touch the casing, it's still not gonna get to you. They calculate how much voltage you're gonna go through it. They put thick rubber so it will not go through it. That's okay. But again, with big drills, you're gonna need to have good uh, ground. Again, if you work in old houses, probably they don't have ground, so make sure you have an adapter with you. We talked about GFCI, ground, fault, circuit interrupter. It's a device that will open the circuit, preventing the current from to go, uh, to go to the receptacle or the appliance. How does it work? It functions as a circuit breaker. So this is a circuit breaker. It works with magnetism. We'll learn about that in boring details. Basically, if you turn on your microwave, your coffee maker, your toaster oven, all at the same time, and you and draw more than 15 amps, which is a lot, this will trip. And you're gonna go out, you're gonna go and have to find the control panel and reset it. So basically it happens when you do the blow dryer or a lot of equipment, so it will trip. The ground fault does the same thing. It has a magnet spring charge and it will trip as a protection measure so you don't break the circuit. That's circuit breaker. So What's the other way to protect against surges in the system? One of them is circuit breaker. Fuses. Fuses, they melt. So most electronics, they have fuses now. I will learn why, when do we use circuit breaker and when do we use fuses? Right off the bat. So the, the circuit breaker can reset. With the fuse, what do, you, what do we have to do? Replacement. You have to go and replace it. So it's annoying. Every time you're gonna go and have to replace it. But they are necessary for some equipment. And uh, remember back in the days there were a lot of, uh, the ACs had a fuse box in the switch and I was responsible to always change the fuse. That was fun. Okay. Circuit breakers are rated based on amps. 
So, because that's the floor we are going to draw. So based on amps. What is the average, actually no, the, right, the standard uh, average? Standard. Breaker um, for any residential circuit. Fifteen amps. So if you go today and look at your panels. All of them are going to be 15 amps. So every circuit is 15 amps. The bedroom, the kitchen, the uh, living room, except for one. Usually they put 20. Which one? Mm -hmm. Huh? Furnace. Furnace? Water. No, not the furnace. The garage and the, uh, what do you say? The washer and dryer. The washer and dryer. They have their own circuit. Uh, because they think you, they might, you might use power, power tool. For the furnace and the boiler, they, it's still 15. 15 is the standard. Okay. Okay. So fuses. <coughs> uh, when we design a circuit, we, we will design for the maximum of the lowest component. So if you're, the maximum amperage draw for your microwave is 15 amps, you design for the 15. The lowest component in the circuit. So in case it surges, it will trip. You're not going to have to for the maximum higher component. You're going to have to for the lowest. Otherwise, give it its own circuit. Uh, Example for number for the normal trigger requires 20 amps. Yeah. So if you have a the maximum at 20 amps, and your component maximum amperage draws 10, it will burn before it reaches the circuit breath. So that defies the purpose. So you design the lowest. Weakest link in the circuit. Make sense? <coughs> a little bit? Okay. Fuses, they can be expensive to replace, but they're necessary for some applications. Okay. Common circuit breaker, hopefully they are labeled. Usually they're not, but if the person who did the electricity in your house have some work ethics, he would have labeled those in case of you trying to find out by trying earlier. That is a picture of a 30 amps circuit breaker. It will trip at 30 amps. <coughs> More than 30 amps, it will trip. Picture of a fuse. Different kind of fuses, some of them they look like a light bulb. They will burn, they will change color. You will see the wire is cut, so you go and replace it. Some fuses, you don't even see it. So how do you know if it's broken or not? Usually one of the ends is burned out. Not necessarily. Sure so you have to do yeah. what's called continuity test. Mm -hmm. So you use your multimeter, put it in continuity, I should beep if there is continuous circuit. I'm not sure. We'll learn how to do that. Okay. A fuse. There's a melting point for this wire, which is milk. So remember this. You're going to carry this to the next semester as well. Every wire that has current going through it will undergo two things. One of them is it will get hot. Any wire will get hot. That's a known fact. Second thing, it will create a magnet, a magnetic field around it. Those two facts actually led the whole inventions of all electrical components. That every wire, once you run current through it, it will generate heat and it will generate a magnetic field. <coughs> so the heat generated in this wire, based on the amperage, will be enough to melt this small little wire. It's not usually nickel and lit, something that will melt quickly. Okay, let's take a 10 minute break.